Diskhead, I would like to ask you if you have ever heard of something called technological determinism. Sorry Tintin, I have never heard of those two words used together in that manner. Please explain. Technological determinism refers to the belief that technology is the agent of social change. How is that possible? How can society be solely directed by technology? You have to go back to stardate 1920 when a man named Thorstein Veblen was witnessing how society was changing due to the effects of industrialization and converging technologies. And what was it that this humanoid concluded? He concluded that a successful technical innovation, if implemented on a sufficiently wide scale, will generate a new type of society, hence the steam age, the age of electricity, the information age and the singularity age. I find it hard to believe that technology itself could change the social, and possibly cultural, map of any given time period. I would like you to share with me one person, who I would know in history, who could collaborate this theory. Take media. Theorist Marshall McLuhan. He has credited the printing press with the creation of the nation state. The printing press, like the internet and all the developments between the two, changed the form in which information could be presented, which from a technological determinist view means it resulted in changing the nature of information that was presented and the way information was received. Let's listen to him for one moment. Why, Marshall, do you use the word tribal? Why, why this? Well, I think you'll find everything we observe tonight about the media uh, points in the direction of tribal man and away from individual man. Now, by individual man, I assume that you're referring to John's literary man. Yes, uh, and, and tribal man is the man created by the new electronic media. So that this would be the basic change we spoke of at the beginning. Yes, we're retribalizing. Involuntarily, we're getting rid of individualism. We're in the process of making a tribe. For just as books and their private point of view are being replaced by the new media, so the concepts which underlie our actions, our social life, are changing. We are no longer so concerned with self-definition, with finding our own individual way. Uh, what the we, we're more concerned with what the group knows, of feeling as it does, of acting with it, not apart from it. I am still struggling to see how different Cultures did not make different decisions in how these technologies would be structured, operated, and regulated, and how those choices seemed to reflect each culture's pre-existing social values. You would think, once adopted, these technologies might reshape the culture's values in return, but not in deterministic or even consistent ways. When you say regulated, you are implying that it can be controlled. Please remember, that technological determinism sees the development of technology, at large, as being ruled by systemic self-dynamics rather than by political or societal influence. You mean there is no way to control how technology develops or how it will impact societies? Right. Society and policy makers should, therefore, not aim at steering to technology because this may not prove successful. They can only prepare themselves for the new technologies coming and try to deal with their impacts and consequences in the most socially compatible way. I feel that you are implying that technology itself is almost a conscious being looking to do what is right for society, rather than vice versa. I would not use the word right to speak of technology in this way. Consider what Kevin Kelly says in his Stardate 2007 presentation. Please listen. And each time we make a new opportunity place, we're allowing a platform to make new ones. And I think it's really important because if you can imagine Mozart before the technology of the piano was invented, what a loss to society that would be. Imagine Van Gogh being born before the technologies of cheap oil paints. Imagine Hitchcock before the technologies of film. Somewhere today, there are millions of young children being born whose technology of, of self-expression has not yet been invented. We have a moral obligation to invent technology so that every person on the globe has the potential to realize their true difference. We want a, a trillion zillion species of one individuals. That's what technology really wants. If you heard him correctly, we are morally obligated to let technology do what it wants. Would this include breaking the law, or even homicide, 
roboside or cyborg side. Maybe the example of the Arab Spring in Stardate 2011 might be a good consideration. Without the technological prescience of cell phones, Facebook and Twitter, this uprising may have been easily repealed. Technology supported it and determined it to happen. First, and perhaps the most obvious and most noted, is Facebook and Twitter are not technology. They are commercial firms, with services developed and deployed as commodities that circulate solely as a means to capture surplus value and thus provide a return on investment for shareholders. Good point. Yet, without their presence, at that exact time, along with the propagation of cell phone usage in the world, this Arab Spring would not have happened. Those events marked a change in thought, even forcing the British government to consider blocking social media services during riots and revolt. Again, the presence of cell phones in the hands of that many people was not by some divine technological determination, but for the desire of profits. Go on. Private and public sector investments in technologies has contributed to the extension of their so-called power within societies. The technologies themselves are not self-creating, they are driven by profit. Thus, technology governs only insofar as it is a part of economic determinism. Profits are not a universal given right of any technological creation. What is true, and will determine today and future technologies, is Moore's law. This law is an indication of the reality of technological determinism. Computing power must increase because it can, regardless of profits. Is there no way to stop this Moore's law, this doubling of computer processing power? Currently, no. Our presence here today even speaks to technological determinism. Even look at our creator, he sits at his computer working on this assignment. His work is only possible by the affordances of computer processing and telecommunications. He is an artifact of technological determinism. He represents some of the earliest shifts in traditional education. What he is doing signals the change in the culture of learning in society in the 21st century and onward. I do feel sorry for him. It appears as though he lacks any form of cybernetic enhancements. I wonder what the Borg would do with him. We are the Borg. Blow your shields and surrender your ships. We will add your biological and technological distinctiveness to our own. Your culture will adapt to service us. Resistance is futile.